Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so for our project, we decided to work primarily on the video components. So, um, so we implemented basically all 17 or 18 units of the of the audio stuff. Um, and so we went for um, harmonics, attack and decay, um, the echo, multiple voices, etc. Um, we had to devise our own um, song ROM format because the one that kind of uh, you guys that the TA suggested was um, slightly limiting in that it didn't allow us to um, to specify like note uh, to specify which instrument is playing etc. So what we did was that we had two different ROMs. We had the song ROM and the instrument ROM, and the song ROM um, had an instrument ID set, section of it, and um, the instrument ROM contained all the harmonics and also decay information about each instrument. Um, and so uh, I. We have a demonstration. Unfortunately, it's kind of quiet, so you might have to, uh, to listen like really carefully for it. We have two speakers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so this is the And then um, the next one demonstrates multiple voices. So what we had um, was that the, the song reader would be repeatedly like sending new note signals to the note players. And we have three note players and a note and a note um, a note player chooser. And what the note player chooser does is it tries to um, work out which note reader is still free, as in which one is not playing a note, and then they arbitrate between them and tells the ones that um, and looks for one that is free and tells it to play a note. So you can that so why is it so quiet? Are you sending a very low amplitude to the codec? Uh, yes, so I, I didn't have time to, to really make it um, much louder. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So you can hear that the signal's like over. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you can see that somewhere. I wasn't watching, but I assumed it was. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, any questions? So who did what? So, yeah. Do you have fast forward in this one? Yeah, the problem is in our last bit file, I don't know if it was overwritten or it was not synthesized. Because, but she didn't. So. Okay. Uh, Brian did most of the audio stuff. Or, um, I was working in class and we find. And, um, but we did not get through the last interface, and Sharon, the visual part, also failed to work at the last time. So. so it looks like you had all this stuff working in simulation, you had trouble when you tried to. Put it uh, yeah, everything was like, yeah, most of the things were working on simulations, but her visual part apparently didn't help. Was it a timing error? Were you getting uh, errors from the tools when you synthesized, or? It was error from the tools, and it was error from the um, the code that I could not fix by myself. Okay. What did you think was the most difficult part of the implementation? Um, so I guess there were definitely lots of parts which um, were difficult to kind of see in simulation, and moving it from simulation to the FPGA was really one of the main issues. Um, like even with the, the, the audio part, which you think you just like simulate and hopefully bring it to the FPGA and it just works. And I brought it to ISC and then it just like, there were lots of tone violations which I had to fix. Um, so yeah, there, there are lots of issues like that that we just couldn't foresee it to So timing violations are just trying to do too much in one clock cycle? Yeah, I mean I had ridiculous things going on like adding a 12 to 16 bit signal together adding three of those things together again and then shifting it right and then having it together. So yeah, it um, makes sense when I have time about it. Other questions? Yeah, thanks guys. Cool. Okay. Okay, see you later.